Welcome to Wealth Wisdom. If you have ambitions to achieve financial success, please leave yes in the comment, and we are here to help you obtain insight and build wealth. The book we are going to share today is How to Attract Money by Joseph Murphy. Don't romanticize poverty. We are conditioned to think that money is evil. Movies and TV shows love to portray money as a corrupting force. But money isn't some mystical thing driving people towards bad behavior. It's a system for swapping goods and services. There is nothing inherently evil about money, and wanting more is not an evil thought. In fact, thinking about money as evil can be very dangerous. Let's change our perception a little by thinking about money as a symbol of exchange. When you think, I want more money, what you're actually thinking is that you want the capacity to do things that require money. For you, that could be anything from buying your partner a beautiful piece of jewelry, to just wanting to buy groceries without worrying your card will bounce. Money is not the goal, the goal is something that money facilitates, it's not evil to want a better life. In fact, it's one of the most natural desires for a human. Security, health, happiness, and education, a future for your children, none of these things are evil. So why would it be evil to want the tool that allows you to achieve them? Often, people have a subconscious aversion to pursuing their financial goals because they think that poverty is virtuous and wealth is evil. Of course, people can do awful things for money and can do awful things with the money they have. But when we consider money as a symbol of exchange, rather than an end in itself, money as evil starts to seem like superstition. The same electricity that powers your house could just as easily kill someone, but that doesn't make it evil. Nor does it make a dark room somehow virtuous. Our ingrained ideas about wealth impact our relationship with money. So if you want to improve your financial reality, you need to address your subconscious negative thoughts around it. Let's look at how. Before we continue. If you are interested in this topic, please consider subscribe and give us a thumb up. Let's continue. What you believe shapes your life. Our beliefs create our reality. This is a core concept, not only in psychology, but also in faith. And it means that the only thing preventing you from living an abundant life is you believing that you can't. The author once worked with an Australian man who desperately wanted to be a doctor, but didn't have the money for college and hadn't even finished high school. He made a living by cleaning for the doctors he wanted to be like. In that situation, it's easy to be taken over by negative thoughts. I'm not smart enough. I'll never be able to pay for it. I'm too old. Instead, the man went to bed each night imagining his name on the diplomas he had to clean. He didn't accept the negative doubts or assumptions, and committed to the dream. When one of the doctors in the office found out, he started training the man to become a technical assistant. He was taught how to sterilize instruments, prepare injections, and do some basic first aid. Seeing the student's passion and talent, this doctor eventually paid for him to finish high school and go to medical school. He ended up becoming a prominent doctor in Montreal. The man had turned his dream into a conviction, paving the way for its fulfillment. By interrupting negative assumptions, you open the way for new possibilities in your reality. Your actions are often impacted by the subconscious movements of your mind, inner feelings, and convictions. By influencing the subconscious, you're setting the north on a compass that you're compelled to follow in the deepest sense. Naturally, you're guided towards success. How to change your mind Think positive isn't exactly groundbreaking advice, and it's easier said than done. After all, a lot of our negative thoughts are subconscious or intrusive. But if wealth comes from a state of mind, then one way to impact that is through affirmations. Relax into a meditative state. You might choose to do this whilst falling asleep at night, or if you have a quiet moment during the day. Let your mind wander over questions about wealth. What does it actually mean? Where does wealth come from? How does money flow? Once you're relaxed, repeat affirmations of wealth to yourself. For the author, this is synonymous with prayer. He explains that God created an abundance in the world, and wealth is always flowing freely. 
That means that prayers of financial affirmation will help us to overcome subconscious blocks that keep us from wealth. If you're starting out with affirmations, just trying to tell yourself I am wealthy or I am successful doesn't work. Saying things that you believe to be false can actually strengthen your belief in the opposite. If you only have 10 cents in your pocket, you might feel embarrassed or ashamed in calling yourself wealthy. You'll want to start with affirmations that your conscious and subconscious can agree on. My wealth is growing. Every day I am more successful. It's easier for you to agree that things are on an upward slope than to imagine they are already at the top. As your relationship with money and success become more positive, more ambitious affirmations will become easier. If you treat the end as inevitable, the steps toward it are always possible. Stealing from yourself. By now we've learned that in order to attract money, you need to foster positive ideas around your own wealth and financial situation. But this also means being conscious of how you think about other people's wealth. Feelings of jealousy, envy, and bitterness all damage your relationship with your finances. If you allow these feelings to grow unchecked, you are feeding the parts of your subconscious that believe you are lacking, and that keep you from harnessing your own potential. Imagine a colleague has just gotten a promotion over you. If your response to this is that you feel robbed, you begin to psychologically disengage with the company or your work. It's easy to be caught up in what thing was taken from you. But if you guide yourself into feeling happy for that colleague, you are able to stay engaged and foster the relationships that could help you succeed in the future. Similarly, gaining wealth at the expense of others can negatively affect your relationship with money. Consider the example of a woman who, during a war, knew that coffee would be rationed. She went from shop to shop, buying out as much coffee as she could store in her house. Later, when she was out, someone broke in and stole the entire stock, as well as her jewelry and silver. The lady would claim that she had never stolen herself. However, she was in a mindset of lacking, and hoarding coffee was at the expense of everyone else. By allowing her negative thoughts to guide her, she negatively impacted others and created exactly the thing that she was afraid of. Fear of lacking created lacking. Remember that money is the symbol of exchange. Having money itself does not make you wealthy, but money is a mechanism for experiences or feelings of stability. If the means by which you're gaining money negatively impact your experiences or feelings in the future, you're simply stealing from your future self. Ask yourself, what is the purpose of attracting money? This isn't a trick question or an attack on the morality of having money. It's a reminder not to lose sight of the goal in pursuit of the symbol. That's the end of today's sharing. If you like our content, please give us a thumb up and share it with your friends. See you next time.